After about 31 or so years, Linux is celebrating its 6.0 release. But as Linus says, so as is hopefully clear to everybody, the major version number change is more about me running out of fingers and toes than it is about any fundamental changes. We went from the 5 series to the 6 series because Linus didn't like the idea of 5.20. 20 is too big of a number. So let's just restart the counting, it means nothing else. But like every kernel release, there's going to be cool fixes and cool additions, and the Rust addition to the kernel is just around the corner. And after all of these years, Linus is still a core part of the Linux project. Sure, he's not the only developer. There is a lot of other people involved, whether it's a recurring maintainer or someone just doing a one-off patch. But he is still the commander-in-chief and the one controlling the ship. But because of this, I got a really interesting question on my Discord. I don't think I've ever really thought about the bus factor of Linux as a project. What would happen if Torvald suddenly disappeared? So the bus factor is what happens if this person is suddenly hit by a bus. But it doesn't need to be that grim. Eventually Linus is probably going to want to retire, and best case scenario is he dies at a really old age of natural causes. But Linus also likes to dive underwater in the ocean, so he might get eaten by a shark. Unless it turns out that Linus is a god among men, eventually he's going to be gone from the Linux project. Does Linux fall apart? Is everything business as usual? Or does Microsoft finally achieve their goal of destroying Linux? Well, obviously I can only speculate, but there have been some things that have happened in the past to give us an indication of what's probably going to happen. On multiple occasions, Linus has discussed this issue himself, most recently back in 2020. Now that you've crossed the half century mark as in his age, have you ever thought of naming a successor and sitting back and savouring what you've achieved, or would you prefer that that came about naturally? I don't think I'll ever be in a situation where I really need to name a successor, it will be fairly clear who it is. Not because this is a democracy and people vote on it and there's a clear winner, but because these things really happen on their own. A successor isn't somebody who gets anointed as such, they end up just doing the work and making themselves one that way. There's always been a few people around who are clearly just people who get relied on a lot. These are people who've been around for years, often decades, and people know them and know how they work and trust them. And he also discussed the same thing back in 2015. There is no concrete plan of action if I die. But that would have been a bigger deal 10 or 15 years ago, so referring to 2000 to 2005. People would have panicked. Now I think they'd work everything out in a couple of months. Greg is the obvious number two, he could take it up, and then there are a couple of other people. The reason it was a way bigger deal back then is Linus was a lot more of a fundamental part of the day-to-day -day Linux development operations, not primarily being a maintainer, but still primarily being a developer, because the Linux development pool was just considerably smaller back then, not just with the developer interest in the project, but also far less funding. So even if someone was very passionate and wanted to be a full-time Linux developer, the amount of opportunities available to do this were considerably smaller. But also very importantly, the Linux Foundation was formed in the year 2000. So between this period, it was either not formed or in its very early infancy. Now we can meme all day about the Linux Foundation not actually using Linux. It's still dumb, but it's a whole separate issue. The Linux Foundation is an incredibly important part of the Linux funding. It connects this FOSS space with the commercial interests who can actually bring funding into the project. And people like Linus Torvald and Greg Crow Hartman are basically sponsored by the Linux Foundation, paid as full-time developers, full-time maintainers to work on the Linux kernel. So what is most likely to happen is one of these existing full-time maintainers basically will take the role of Linus Torvalds. But who is going to do that because there is a lot of them? Well, Linus has already taken a break from the project, so why don't we look at that? 
all the way back in 2018 from September to October. It's not a giant window, but it's still enough where we had a kernel release where Linus took a break because basically people were angry at the way he acted in the mailing list. You know, insulting people and constantly swearing, kind of unprofessional behavior. I'm not here to say whether this was a good thing or a bad thing, but it did happen. And in an email at the time, because they were in the middle of a release cycle, he said this. To tie this all back to the actual 4.19 RC4 release, no, this really is all related, I actually think that 4.19 is looking fairly good. Things have gotten to a calm period of the release cycle, and I've talked to Greg to ask him if he'd mind finishing up 4.19 for me so that I can take a break and try to at least fix my own behaviour. With Greg referring to someone who I've mentioned a couple of times throughout this video, Greg Crower Hartman, who is a core kernel maintainer, a lead developer on the kernel, an employee of the Linux Foundation, and by many people, typically considered to be Linus Torvalds' basically right-hand man in Linux. He is pretty much the second in charge. And ultimately did finish off the 4.19 release cycle. So the last one that Linus did was 4.19-RC4, and then Greg basically handled the next five until the proper release of 4.19. But tagging the mainline kernel releases and making sure they are ready to go out to the public isn't really that different from what Greg Crawhart and typically does. So among various development operations, he is also one of the maintainers of the stable branch, alongside Sasha Levin. So the stable branch of Linux are things like your 5.19.12 release, but also your LTS releases. So if we go and check the change logs for some of these, we'll see that most of them are being signed off by Greg Crower Hartman. He is not the only one involved in doing this. As I mentioned, Sasha Levin is also one of the maintainers of the stable branch, but the vast majority of stuff in here is being done by Greg Crower Hartman. And there have been a bunch of other maintainers that have handled a small handful of releases, like Andy Clean, Paul Gortmaker, Adrian Bunk, Ben Hutchings, and a bunch of others. But no one is as consistent as Greg Crubber Hartman. And generally, the only reason that someone else takes over is Greg doesn't want to maintain it anymore and wants to move on to the next version. For example, with 2.6.16. This is just a notice to everyone that Adrian is now going to be taking over the 2.6.16-stable kernel branch for him to maintain for as long as he wants to. He's going to be following the same stable rules that we're normally doing, all of that fun stuff, and I'd like to offer my best wishes to Adrian for doing this work. Personally, I don't think he'll be done for all that long an amount of time, and I'll be very happy to see him prove me wrong. I think Linus is right when he says he doesn't need to directly name a successor, and the work is going to prove it instead. It seems like there is only one logical choice for who is going to take over that position. I would expect there to be some chaos initially, with a lot of people kind of unsure about the future of the project, but most likely... Greg Crow Hartman is going to move up to that lead maintainer position and pretty much just fill the role of what Linus Torvalds was doing. He's handled the most kernel releases, second only to Torvalds. At least looking in from the outside, a much more concerning state is if they both went at the exact same time. From there, there doesn't seem to be a next, you know, obvious choice to go with. The next logical choice would probably be Sasha Levin, as he's handled the next amount of kernel releases after Greg, but it's not as obvious as Linus's second in command. From there, I would expect there to be a power vacuum that forms, and factions form to fight over who is going to take over the project. I don't think it's going to destroy the Linux project entirely, but I would expect there to be severe delays and would probably stop seeing kernel releases maybe for a couple of months. Unlike many projects out there, the Linux kernel isn't just an open source project. It is an open source project with around 30 million lines of code. This isn't something that you can just easily go and fork. Sure, there are forks of the kernel that exist, but most of them track the kernel and then add patches onto the thing that they are tracking. When it comes to like, you know, actually going off and doing your own thing, that's far less likely to happen. 
the kernel sort of relies on the existing development structure being somewhat stable and everybody working towards a common goal. But what do you think is going to happen? Do you think this would spell the end for Linux, or do you think the project will recover from all of this with basically no hitches? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, you can check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.